Hey everybody, it's Ravenflower, and tonight I have a special guest. I thought it would be groovy if you got to know my cousin, because she rocks. Take it away! Yay me! Yay me! <laughs> Hi everyone. You guys, this is my cousin Sarah, and um, she is on my little instant chat here. My little uh, Google instant chat. There's Sarah Nations right there. Um, she does not have video, so we're just sort of working it out via um, via just regular, regular old good old fashioned. What is this conference calling? Yeah, what is I this? can't show my radio face. I mean, you can't know. show your radio face. Yeah, you're, you're pretty fancy. You're pretty fancy, you know. <laughs> yeah, I take after my grandma. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I don't know who I take after. I just got the flat face. I got the flat face. <laughs> You look like you look like your aunties. You sure do. I do. I do. I look like a Pammy. I look like a Pammy Whammy. You do. And I think Jessica and I look like Grandma. Yeah, and my daughter looks like you guys. Oh God, and Rachel, absolutely Rachel. Yeah. Jesus. Rachel, yeah. Rachel looks like y'all, absolutely. Hi, Rachel. She's not even here. She found, she found herself a, a a boyfriend, and she's just been wandering wandering around. I don't know what she's doing. She'll see it later. Yeah, she will. She'll see it later. <laughs> Well, hello to all of our family who's watching. Now we've synced Hi. up. We've synced up. Okay, Sarah, I wanted to talk to you, or I wanted I wanted my peoples, my peoples who watch me, um, get to know you in some ways because you and I have been through some stuff together, and it's interesting to hear my side, but I think it's better when they get both sides of the story. So do you want to talk about, like, how I came into y'all's life? Sure, but first, if you guys hear that rap music in the background, I apologize. That is the husband back there. Is the husband <laughs> dropping loud. beats? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we met. Gosh, um, I think I was twenty-six. That sounds about 25, right. Twenty-six. Yeah. Yeah. Kaylin was Kaylin was one and a half years old. About one years old. One and a half. I don't know. I think Rachel and was like three. She was three. Yeah. yeah. Um, I get a phone call from my grandmother. She's like, you might want to sit down. And I want to sit down. Why? Because I got something to tell you. And I was like, what? She goes, why are you sitting down? But I wasn't, but I said I was. But I, she was like, you have a cousin that's your, you know, the same age as you. Now, I, I was always the oldest cousin. I've never had, you know, people my age to, like, kind of play with, except for, you know, Grandpa Mario's, you know, family, whenever they'd come up. But as far as like cousins would come up with us, I was always the oldest. So um, to find out I had somebody my age, I was like, what? And then you were Mark's kid? I was like, what? My favorite uncle, like what? So, um, you know, your dad always uh, took extra special care of me all the time, was always spoiling me, buying me Garfields or, you know, Garfields. I collected Garfields, don't ask me why, but I did. And he used to buy me everything Garfield. And I was like, now it makes sense, you know, like why he was so sheltering of me. I know I didn't have my dad in my life, but um, he would be very sheltering. And I and I always like now now I wonder that. I'm like wondering if he kind of knew. And now I'm in the, I reminded you of that, yeah. or him of you, I should say. So um, when I found out that you existed, she's like, "Here's the number. You guys should call each other." And then we did, and. Like, we just started right off the top, just, what color are you thinking? What number am I thinking? <laughs> you know? Kind of cool. Yeah, we, we found out that we had psychic abilities through, you know, the Cousin Channel real quick. We used to be able to, back back when it was like, what was it, AOL? Was it AOL chat? Chat rooms? Oh my or whatever. God, Do you yeah, remember? Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yes. Um, comic chat. Comic <laughs> chat. Comic chat. Yeah, we would get on there and chat away and um, I'd be like, what, what number am I thinking? And what, you know, what color am I thinking? And we would just pull stuff out of each other's heads pretty much constantly it, and we just had a connection instant connection it's like I, I I found my dad but it's like I gained so much more in you and Aunt Pam and then the others started to come along but it took him a while it took him a while but I mean you and Aunt Pam I think were the most um, like open <laughs> you're the most open like but yeah think, you know looking back on this I think it's very 
interesting how I was the one grandma came to first to tell me about you. She just had to tell me. And I feel like that's the same thing that happens when we kind of move forward in the story. Yeah. And we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But just remember this part. What I want you to know. Okay, stop, everybody. Take notes mm-hmm. right here, right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. My grandmother, you need to know this. My grandma. little finger shaking at us. Okay. Oh, my God. We, yeah. I had a phrase for a while because our grandmother is, I mean, no, no joke. Like she's a shit stirrer. <laughs> she, she will she's cause some Scorpio. shit. Yeah. She Hello. will cause some crap. And so I had this term, our grandmother's name is Helen. And, um, and so when something was going wrong or whatever, I'd be like, Oh, Helen, here we go again. <laughs> and stop and take notes of that because that comes around too. It will come around again. It will yes. come around. Okay, so where do we go from here? So okay. then, okay, like you. So then I got to Granada meet you. Oh, that's right. You came to San it's Antonio to Texas. meet me. Right. And you had your uh, receive, right? Mm-hmm. There and mm-hmm. Going through your stuff. And I did not understand some of the dynamics that you were going through. Uh huh. At the time. Well, so I was trying going... to cover it up. I was trying to cover it up from you because I didn't want to embarrass myself to my new family. And so I go, aha, one day. <laughs> <laughs> and I was trying to, like, get me a flight home early. Uh huh. Yeah, you were standing right behind me while I was on the phone at, like, what, two in the morning. You're like, well, what are you doing? I'm, like, I'm trying to get the hell up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, so, I don't want any more of this man, or you guys are fighting. Uh huh. Yep. Craziness. Um, so then I stayed. Obviously, I didn't leave. I stuck it out and got to understand more of the dynamics on that. So yeah, that whole thing with the antidepressants and your depression and not knowing why you're depressed, and that talks about it, and you opened up about all that stuff and got free from that which is also take, they already know about that, those how you came about with that depression and knew why right? yeah yeah I think I've shared that with everybody so when that got answered that was like wow even more confirmation for us it's amazing yeah so then then after that let's see where do we go from there so uh we stay in touch, you go through your life challenges, I go through my life challenges, and um, mm-hmm. mine being the whole thing with the restaurant, uh, like losing everything, moving here, start over to North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, Grandma was alive then, mm-hmm. of course, and I used to talk to her every day about it, and she would tell me, think what to do. It's just like, hey, you know, uh, I would offer you a space here, but, you know, I don't have the room for everybody. And I wasn't asking for that, actually, but um, I guess she went and took it upon herself to call Lucille, which is her baby sister, whose real name is Ellen, by the way. You like that? Ellen and Ellen? Oh, my God. Um, I didn't know that. That was a thing. That's really? a thing there. Wow. Uh, yes, her name is Ellen Lucille. And she and looks the, just like Grandma, too. She really does. Oh, my gosh. They look and just like... she's a like, rock star. She's a rock star, and everybody should aspire to be like Lucille. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like, amazing. My daughters are, like, so attached to her and close to her, um, which I, I love, but it hurts my feelings a little bit at the same time because I wanted them to be like that with my grandmother, but um, that didn't happen. Yeah. Unfortunately, but they do love her very much, and... And, you know, Lucille was not very, um, she she didn't get all the closeness to my grandma that she wanted to because uh, she was so young when my grandmother got married and moved away. She was maybe nine years old. So they didn't really um, bond a lot. So when I talk about my grandmother to her, she gets, she gets kind of like, man, I wish that I had that, you know? So she tries to make up for it here and... I'll back up because I'm kind of going all over the place, but my grandmother wanted me to move to North Carolina because of Lucille. She's like, go let, go, no, go be with Lucille. And, you know, you know, your grandfather didn't like Texas. So go to North Carolina. And when I actually came here, 
and um, we went to the farmhouse in Mount Airy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all of our our family is there. The nation side literally lives around the corner from the branch side, so it's they're all close, and that's where yeah. we all hung out. And it's kind of interesting to see, um, you know, our name everywhere too. Like everything's nations this, nations that, there's mm-hmm. nations for nations, blah blah blah. So. Um, Branch Boys Drive, and you know, it's it's kind of cool to see that stuff because you know, in Oxnard, you got none of that. And <laughs> I don't even know why we migrated to Oxnard. I really don't know why I actually left here and went there. But but seeing all this like like trees and everything, now I know why she uh, you know went to the went to the canyon and made a life there because it's very similar. That reminded her of home, and I think she always missed home, and she yeah. came here as much as she could. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I get to see all that stuff and the houses that they grew up in and the cousins, the distant cousins are still living in those homes, like it's kind of amazing. Yeah, that is good. That is amazing. I haven't been there yet, but I need to go. I don't know when I'm going, but I need to go. <laughs> you're going to love it. When you come to Mount Airy, um, Bruce, everybody's going to come and you're going to, the ranch um, or farmhouse is like on 63 acres. So it just like, Crazy. You just roam around, got wild turkeys running around, horses like up there. Like, um, it's just nice. It's a nice getaway from just the city life because I'm in Charlotte, obviously. So, um, it's nice to go up there and just know where she roamed and loved and and everything like that. Um, so you're gonna love it. I think you and 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 also Lucille because Lucille is just amazing. I can't wait to beat her. We talk on Facebook every now and again, do ancestry type stuff together. I'm like, check this out. Check this page. Look what I found. (laughs) We're going to love her. And she's got um, in the farmhouse, she's got a lot of pictures of the houses where they all kind of grew up in, hung out, or or some of our ancestors lived in. And so all those little black and white pictures are hanging up in the the dining room on the wall. And uh, that's where we had a conversation about a great 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 grand- grandmother i think it is that um you know lucille was always referring to my grandma or if you ask any of her kids that our grandmother was the weird aunt helen and because she would always come up like on her trips from california she'd drive all the way to north carolina and pit stop through what arizona new mexico mm-hmm. somewhere through there michelle michelle knows more about it than i do but she would pick up crystals and stuff and bring them with her and she would put crystals all over the house she set them all over the fireplace all over the windows it was like everywhere she could and set up her little sanctuary and they're like okay Helen, okay <laughs> well little did i know even though they thought she was weird they kept them and so last christmas i got presented a big bowl of crystals for my grandmother that was too cool She's like, you need to have she says, you need to have these rocks. <laughs> I have all these rocks for you. Got all these said, rocks. Not just rocks. I know. I was like, you don't understand. You know, because I got nothing from my grandmother when she passed away. But that was priceless. Like, I literally cried my about That was amazing. And I have them all sitting here in the house now. That's too cool. That was too amazing. cool. Yeah. I but, remember um, to you back were up, just one tears. of your great, great grandmothers, when Lucille was handing me these crystals, said that, she also did little healing things and like she would uh you know breathe into the mouth of people's babies to get rid of the thrush Ooh. you know little things like that so she's acknowledging that this is something that wasn't just with my grandmother you know mm-hmm. which i thought was very cool for her to be open to very interesting very interesting and i i did some ancestry work on that too so i mean our we go we go back i mean we go all the way back to France. That's as far as I can get back. And I think that's 1300s, the 1300s, and then the 1500s in England. So, um, and then there's some ties to, um, to the craft there, definitely. But for them, it was a way of life, you know, it was a way of life. And you were a part of the church just for, you know, political purposes, status, you know, social status and things like that. So people were practicing Mm -hmm. in their homes, you know, and it was, you know, hush, hush. So, but it wasn't as... Which is what she was doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. she did the same thing. Yeah. You know, practice in her home. Um, because what, I think it was, shoot, when they moved to the canyon, up mm-hmm. to the Delahaw Canyon, I was 
nine years old. Um, and I would think about 11-ish or 12 is when I first saw her doing a crystal healing. I like walked in on it and I literally turned around and I ran. I ran. I ran like a bat out of hell. I ran. I did not know what I was looking at, but I just saw her working on somebody and their head. I, and I think it was Pam actually who was working on yeah. She had crystals all, all, all uh, uh, you know, in a shape of a cross on her and she had a humongous crystal at the at, at her head and she was just in a circular motion going around and and Pam's hair was sticking straight up and like literally straight up and I just I just took off running and I remember locking myself in the bathroom another time and while she was burning stage to the house and her blowing it under the door and I would try to you know stuff a towel under the door because they hated the smell and she's like you have the devil outside of us <laughs> like i just hate the smell so that's why i didn't say um it was it's like i didn't understand that stuff and i i kind of wish that i now i i knew then what i know now i just wish i did because i would have been so far into this but it just wasn't my time to know that i guess and yeah um but i look up on that i look on that and laugh and i talked to kevin about it i talked to my husband about it all the time he's like make fun of me because he loves, you know, the smell of the sage and the sage spray and stuff. And I just have never loved it, you know, more of a nag champa type of girl. But, nag yeah. champa. What about yeah. Palo, Palo Santo? No? You don't like Palo Santo? I would like that too. I just, the thing, I don't know if it's just because sage. she forced it on me. I don't understand it, but I like, I would spray it all over the place. <laughs> I can you know, see her. Here. Of, ah, here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's too I funny. Tell you. That's funny. So our grandmother was a light healer, and we didn't know this. Uh -huh. Well, you knew it, but I had I, well, no I clue. Knew it, but I, I had didn't no clue. know it. I didn't. I don't think I understood it, nor did I question it or ask questions because I didn't want to know. I just kind of like, I'm out. Bye. Mm -hmm. Out. Ran the other way. Yeah. And it wasn't until, um, okay, well, we'll back up. So she, um, I moved. When we lost our home in the restaurant, we moved here. Moved here immediately after. Um, in 2011, it was December of 2011. And we had, uh, Oxnard, Oxnard is in California, so they went from one side of the country all the way to the other side of the country to, to, Charlotte, to yes. Charlotte, North in Carolina. A, uh, <laughs> in a 1990 Mustang GT my husband used to race and hadn't had it registered since 2004 okay the tags on it today still say 2004 from california and he pulled that out of the garage and started it right up we got the oil changed and everything and we put what we could fit in a pod and um whatever clothes we could fit in the back of that mustang and we left and it got us from california all the way here without even breaking down that mustang never had one hiccup <laughs> We got a. We went obviously to the DMV and got a one-way, you know, registration pass to get here. But we didn't even have an issue, not one, uh, which is amazing for a car that was sitting in the car in the garage from 2004 to 2011. Dude, so, I remember that car in the garage because I'm just like, is he ever going to mm -hmm. drive that thing? I would come and visit nope. and, you know, um, and pick up Rachel for visitation, take her back to Texas with me. And we'd stay at your house. And sure enough, that, that, that car was in the garage. He wasn't, he yeah, wasn't taking it anywhere. He used to race. He used to go to the racing tracks with it. And um, he's got fancy stuff on it. But when he cra he had crashed into a wall, not, not, da not totaling it or anything, but he just didn't drive it anymore and you know we each had our own other cars but when we lost everything we sold all those things to you know survive so we yeah had, like no car so we that's little miss trusty that got us here and she's still sitting in the garage outside right now <laughs> she's not going anywhere but we got all the way here in that car i'm just i'm freaking amazed by it but uh so you know my grandmother you know this is our choice we're going to go ahead and go to north carolina and this is where we're going to go relocate to you know because i mean everybody in california was you know struggling and we were going to be homeless so we needed somewhere to stay for a while so lucille's willing to help us and my friend jennifer so um she gave us a roof overhead all, all four of us were living in her bonus room for quite a few months until we got on our feet but 
um, my grandmother was like, that's where you need to go, and made that decision, and she's like, I'm never going to see you again. And she said that to me, and I was like, well, stop talking like that. She goes, but I'm serious, and I'm like, stop talking like that. Uh, so, long story short, we moved here December 2011, and literally, th- what, three months later, March of yeah. 2012, it was March she 2012. passed away, you know, in their sleep, and that was the worst day of my entire life, and I will never forget that day, and I was sitting in Jennifer's house in her bonus room, because that's where our little mattress was on the floor, and sitting on the bed, and I opened up my laptop, and there's this mass, you know, Facebook messaging going on with our family, and I remember it was Dean. Dean's the one that wrote it. He said, you know, mom's gone, and those words will never be erased from my brain, and I had a complete, utter meltdown. I mean, I think I was already on the brink of a total meltdown, you know, major. It was way overdue, by the way, but that was the day I dreaded all of my life. Like, I I was like, as a kid, when my grandmother would leave me, because she was, you know, so, so important to me, you know, and um, I'm like, I'm going to be institutionalized if she ever leaves this world. I just can't even deal with it. I can't wrap my brain around not having her here because I was that close to her and like she raised me you know so um when she died I just she like three months later like really after losing my home losing my business losing grandpa everything now you I know my grandfather but that you know I had some time to recoup you know that was in 2010 so I had a little bit of time you know not a lot 18 months not a lot but I had a little heads up but that this was like two chops of the throat dude that was the worst thing that you could do to me and um i literally spiraled down to the bottom of the barrel and nobody could talk to me reason with me nothing i screamed i ran down that street of jennifer's house screaming and crying and i i don't even know when i came back i just i literally lost my life and uh it was the worst day ever and it took me Gosh, four years, almost five years to yeah. recoup. I remember, I, I remember I was on my way to get gas in the car or something, and then just like, oh, I'll call Sarah real quick, and hoping to have conversations like we used to, but, you know, it just wasn't the same, you know, for a few years. And then I called you one year, and I'm just like, I'm like, it's Christmas, and you're going to get yourself out of it, and you're like, I, I know I need to, but I don't want to right now. Like, you really were very adamant. You didn't want to have to deal with any of it you know it wasn't my time yet and so when my when my friend Sarah and my friend Claudia they're my friends from California I actually met Sarah uh she was big Sarah I was little Sarah we met when I was living with grandmother in Ohio. um I was going to junior high school out there at um Matilla Hall Junior High I met her there in seventh eighth grade <clears throat> And then I ended up getting sent back home to move, live with my mom and lost touch with Sarah. Sarah and I got back in touch when we graduated high school. We both joined the Army. Um, hilarious. And we were um, put in the same unit. Um, we went Army Reserve, obviously. So we were in the same Army Reserve unit. And we were sent to a drill together. And that's when we were like, what? And so here we are, big Sarah, little Sarah. But... You know, you go by your last name. So she was Valenzuela and Baldovino. So she was Big Val. I was Little Val. It's pretty funny. That is funny. Um, <laughs> it is funny. And Sarah ended up, you know, moving forward with her career, becoming the first female motorcycle cop of Ventura County, which was quite an accomplishment for her. And she prided herself on that. And she met Claudia, our other friend. Cause Claudia was also a sheriff's deputy. And they became good friends. So all three of us became friends. Um, and tragedy struck me first, you know, with what I told you guys, losing all our stuff and me we being here to start over, and then it struck Claudia. Claudia, you know, got in a domestic violence situation, and, you know, her and her fiancé were fighting, and it was him or her, and she won. I'll just say it that way. Um, GR passed away, um, because Claudia protected herself and it was self-defense and you know 
So she lost her career over it and moved away to Memphis to start over. And then Sarah got ovarian cancer and um, had had surgery and almost passed away from the surgery. And so she was forced into retirement. So she lost her career. So she ended up, you know, going through depression and moved to Pennsylvania. So here we are, little three stooges in completely different states. And so Sarah's like calling me out of the blue and saying, I'm going to pay for your way to come with me to Memphis to go visit Claudia. Jenna Jackson's performing. This was last September. And she's like, you're not going to say no. I'm doing it. You're coming. I want my friend back. You need to get out of this depression. And I will not take no for an answer. I kicked and screamed. When I tell you I kicked and screamed, I did not want to go. I wanted to see my house and self out, and I didn't want anything to do with it. And she called my husband to be on my back and was like, I already paid for the check that she's selling. Like, just make sure she gets to the airport. So I am pissed off. I just want you to know. And so I go to the airport, and I miss my flight. So I'm that pissed off. So I miss my flight. I have to wait a couple hours for the next one. And I'm just like, this is already, I was crying. Dude, was like, you missed your flight. I missed my flight, you know, where I was supposed, because Sarah flew in from Pennsylvania into Charlotte, that was what her connecting flight was, and we were going to get on the same flight together and then go to Memphis, and I, I don't fly, so I did not know I had to be there, like, two hours early, so I'm, like, here 30 minutes <laughs> before the flight. Oh, She's my like, God. But, yeah, you can't board, you're going to have to wait for the next one, this is, like, two hours. I sat there crying. I told Kevin, you need to come get me. I'm done. He's like, no, you're going to wait. You're going. So this was just, <laughs> everything was pointing to, like, take your ass home and just screw this. But I sat there. I cried my eyes out. Had a little pity party for a while. And then got on the plane and just pulled my big girl panties on and went. So by this time, you know, they had already, you know, been sitting at the bar having a couple of drinks. So they were like, you're coming to catch up with us. I'm like, oh, wonderful. Let's just stay. <laughs> um, like, so, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> nope, I wasn't. I was really, really irritated. And so, um, let's see, what's the next day we just, you know, Claudia has her own business. So she's doing, like, her business is meant to clean out there. So she's cleaning carpets and like all, for all the restaurants on Beale Street so she's really busy so she couldn't spend a lot of time with us during the day so Sarah and I were able to you know go um sightsee and stuff and go to you know um Graceland which was really exciting and to the place where Martin Luther King Jr. was shot and um, you know just got to see mm -hmm. a lot of cool things but Historical the coolest places. thing was you know I'm gonna take you to go see this um, medium. Her name is Christiana, and uh, we had an hour session. She paid for it, and that was a very pivotal, life-changing moment, hands down for me. I I, I was blown away. So uh, Sarah and I go in there together, and I asked if I could stay. You know, during Sarah's reading, she says if Sarah doesn't mind. So I sat while Sarah had hers first, and the whole time I'm like looking at pictures of my grandmother on my phone and just like all I want to do is talk to you like that is it and um, I'm hearing what she's saying to Sarah and right away she's telling Sarah um, you know that she's going through this depression and, and it has everything to do with her losing her job and her career and she's nailing it on the head and Sarah's just bawling her eyes out she looks at me and she says and your friend over here she's pointing at me that I need to heal her and I looked at her like, uh, what? <laughs> Wait, what? What? what did you're, you like, say? you're like, I'm broken. I'm broken, uh, bitch. No, I don't know I'm what here you got. Because <laughs> they think I'm broken. I'm here because they want to fix me, and you're telling me to fix her. And Sarah's just crying. And I'm like, I didn't even know you were like going through all this stuff. I didn't know that, you know, she's she hides it well. She never acted depressed. And I'm like, I have to heal her. Like, how exactly? She goes, you're, I'm going to tell you how you're going to get, you know, some moonstone and some rose quartz and some amethyst and you're going to do these, like, you know, just, I'm like, what? what? I don't even know what you're talking about. And she's like dying inside. You're kidding me. She's like, no, you have to heal her. And I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. I'm like, I, I no, she's, you are, you're a healer. So it's my turn to get in the hot seat and she starts reading me and immediately she's like, you do believe in past lives, right? I said, well, yes, and she says, what do you think you are? And I said, I think I was kind of 
like Egyptian times, just because my grandmother used to say that to me all the time. So yeah, you've had more than one. That's one of them, but this is not what I'm referring to. She's like, you were a healer in your past life, as I said before. And she's like, I'm leaning toward more, you know, Native American time, but you definitely were a healer where people um, used to bring their children from, you know, all over there. Like, they would travel, like, to bring their children to you for you to heal their children. And I always wonder why I was, like, gravitated to kids. That's kind of fascinating to me because I've always been... Um, child care or working with disabled children. Um, mm-hmm. I was a medic in the army. I've always been mm-hmm. in the nurturing field, you know, taking care of people. So, but just never was content in either. I mean, I love taking care of the disabled children. I love that. But, you know, obviously it's very hard to live on that pay because they don't pay you anything. So it's hard to survive. Um, yeah. But you want to do that. That's where I felt more complete, you know, you know, but. So hearing her say that to me, I was like, wow, that's interesting. And then immediately she says, uh, by the way, <laughs> your grandmother is standing right here. She's shaking her little finger at you. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> you're, you're not listening. If you don't listen, I'm just going to keep getting louder. And uh, I'm just like, okay, this is the first time I'm hearing this, Like, but I'm listening. And she says, your grandmother is thing that you're a healer and you know she was a healer and you're a healer you come from a line of that and that's when you came to my mind immediately I was like holy shit I have to call Yvonne as soon as I get home I am dying right now this is like what <laughs> and you know she goes on to talk about my daughter she, she mentions Kaylin she mentions Zoe she she's like Kaylin is dabbling in it like look, looking up crystals and you know you make sure she stays on the light side of it and I'm like what I didn't even know she was even looking into that stuff so when I told her that she was floored when I came home she was like what I want to know more um so then we go into you know why I need to help my friend Sarah and you know what I need to do I need to come home and you know get a total chakra cleanse because you know I'm just I'm totally blocked in my heart chakra which we knew and I have all this grief and so I come home and I do that, but um, after I had that, the shuffle cleanse, like, I, I mean, the butterflies that I saw coming out of my my mind, like, <laughs> just insane. There were like, these bright blue butterflies everywhere, and I, I was just crying in the middle of the store while I was getting the cleanse done, and, you know, just like, I can't stop. It was, and it was a short session. It was like a 15-minute session, and I'm just all, I, I never told anybody except for you about the butterfly thing. I just kept it in my mind. And then, then you told me that that's happened to me. He saw it from you, and I'm just like, yeah. what the heck? Yeah, when he released me, and I only had a 15-minute session as well. It's kind of crazy um, that he went that deep. I mean, it's just, just craziness. Um, so, yeah, I had that, and um, and I felt like this crazy, like, rush. Um, and then he's just like, I see blue and yellow butterflies coming off of you. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh my god, like, oh. Fabulous. 